Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. It's been three years since I started posting lecture videos on the internal sales. I still remember like yesterday the collective uncertainty, the collective fear for our loved ones, and uh, many other emotions we all went through. Well, in lockdown, I thought, why not use my newfound spare time to help society and the internal style community in a way that I'm best able to? That was born the lecture series. Ever since, I have been posting at least one video every week, sometimes more. The lecture series has enabled me to share my knowledge and experience with the community. I have also received invaluable feedback from the community which has only helped me provide even better content in return. So, I thank you all for supporting my endeavor for the last three years. I look forward to many more and with our continued support. Every challenge in the future will only provide bigger and better opportunities. With that said, a quick announcement about Dao Yi. A couple of weeks ago, the official Dao Yi website was launched along with the Dao Yi YouTube channel and the Facebook page. A few days ago, Dao Yi also launched the Facebook group Dao Yi Open Community. This Facebook group is open for everyone to join and participate in. Allow me to roll out the red carpet to you all to contribute your thoughts, ideas, knowledge, as well as demonstrations in the group. Dao Yi Open Community strives to be inclusive and unbiased, and we welcome all contributions as long as they are relevant to Dao Yi's focus area, internal martial arts, Xiu Dao, Qigong, and TCM. We do not censor anyone as long as you comply with Facebook's community standards. Your behavior outside the group is of zero concern to us. I look forward to seeing you out there. Link to the Facebook group is in the description. That was all in terms of announcements. Now, let's get on with today's topics. So far, I have introduced 20 Xiu Dao topics through step-by-step -step and topic approaches. However, I have yet to provide a comprehensive overall introduction of Xiu Dao as a system. So, that will be today's main topic. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jin commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's Dao De Jin topic is Xian Su Bao Pu, a very important concept from Lao Zi. In the 18th chapter, Lao Zi introduced some social phenomena if the Great Tao was abandoned. In this chapter, Lao Zi continued to elaborate on the solution to restore social conduct according to the Great Tao. It is a very short chapter, but it introduces a lot of terms that are still in popular usage. Lao Zi said, quote, 绝圣气质,民力百倍,绝人气义,名副孝慈,绝巧气力,盗贼无有。Quote. Translation: Abandon your saintliness, put away your prudence, and the people will gain in hundredfold. Abandon your benevolence, put away your justice, and the people will return to filial piety and paternal devotion. Abandon smartness, give up greed, and thieves and robbers will no longer exist. End translation. According to Lao Zi, none of these three things help our progress. 
Lao Tzu further introduced a solution to achieve an ideal result called Xian Su Bao Pu, Shao Si Gua Yu, Jue Xue Wu Yu. End quote. Translation To perceive simplicity, to conserve beauty in the heart. To curb the selfishness and to have a few desires. End translation. So, the key concept that I'd like to introduce is the first of these three terms, Xian Su Bao Pu. Now, let me translate it word by word. Xian Su Bao Pu is the four word term. Xian means to apply, display. Su Originally used to mean an colored silk, now it means plainness. Bao means keep, adopt. Pu originally used to mean an carved wood, now it means simplicity. Put together, Xian Su Bao Pu promotes the concept peace and harmony reside in the simplicity, which means to return to purify and simplicity. Another way to express the concept of Wu Wei or non-action. In Xiu Dao practice, Xian, <coughs> in Xiu Dao practice, Xian Su Bao Pu has been used to guide the overall Xiu Dao system for over 2000 years. Very often, people use the term Pu Su or uncarved wood and uncolored silk, which reflects the attitude toward the energy refinement process. Pu Su, originally meaning purity and simplicity in Tao Te Ching, became the way to manage different energetic experiences during Xiu Dao. Very often, when energy rises, practitioners may shift their attention from the overall energy body to a specific body area that has an energy sensation. Shifting attention is the correct practice in Xiu Dao when the objective of that specific process is to strengthen the energy. However, sometimes this shifting of attention may have an adverse effect on practice, which means that the practitioner should still maintain a Pu Su attitude even when the energy is rising. In other words, the practitioner should continue to apply the static approach to deal with this specific energetic experience. For example, when the mystery gate or Xuan Guan is emerging, a Pu Su attitude should be applied in dealing with the energy sensation. By the way, the term Pu Su nowadays is commonly used to describe a minimalist lifestyle. Simplicity and the concept Less is more has been emphasized in Taoism for thousands of years. Personally, I appreciate this lifestyle greatly. It can benefit not only society but also the individual. When studying Taoism, one should adapt oneself to the lifestyle according to Taoist concepts, or else the benefits would be limited by our own choices. With that, let me now provide an overall introduction to the Xiu Dao system, the main topics for today. Topics covered in today's video include First, what is Xiu Dao? Second, key building blocks of Xiu Dao practice. Third, how to begin Xiu Dao practice. Fourth, misperception and fifth takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. What is Xiu Dao? The term Xiu Dao consists of two words. Xiu means cultivate, practice. Dao means Dao. Put together, 
修道 means cultivate Tao. In the Taoist practice, there are many terms expressing the same meaning as Xiu Dao, such as Shou Yi or concentration of one, where one means prenatal energy, Xiu Zhen or cultivate reality, where Zhen means someone who has achieved the great Tao, and so on. So, in Taoist history, any practice that can be used to cultivate energy and spirit has been considered Xiu Dao. To understand the term Xiu Dao better, we have to know the basic history of a Xiu Dao practice. First of all, in Chinese history, there have been two categories of Taoist practice. The first category is based on the philosophical aspect of Taoism. Any practice based on Taoist belief is considered practical Taoism. So, sometimes, Taoist practice based on Taoist philosophy is also called practical Taoism. This category of Taoism was mainly created by Lao Tzu, an important Chinese philosopher who lived about 2500 years ago. The second category of Taoist practice is based on Taoist religion. Very often, we call it religious Taoism, which was formally created about 1900 years ago by Zhang Daoling, about 600 years after Lao Tzu. By the way, Lao Tzu was nominated as one of the gods of religious Taoism later on. Fortunately, both practical Taoism and religious Taoism use the term Xiu Dao to express a similar concept, the method that has been used for self-cultivation. They both take Tao De Jin as the most important doctrine guiding their practices. The foundation of religious Taoism is based on the philosophy created by Lao Tzu. Again, Lao Tzu was an ancient Chinese philosopher and originally a non-religious figure who was later accorded religious significance in religious Taoism, many centuries after his time. So, if we focus on the practical aspect of the Taoist method that has been used for thousands of years, that becomes the core definition of the term Xiu Dao. This is not at all a new approach, but this method of defining the term Xiu Dao was not so prevalent before the Republic time of China, around the 1930s. Xiu Dao practice had been intertwined with the Taoist religion for a significant portion of Chinese history. That changed around the 1930s because of some prominent Taoist figures such as Chen Yangning, who promoted the concept of separating Xiu Dao practice from religion. When talking about Xiu Dao, Taoist meditation is the most important method among others. Then, what was the milestone of the development of the Taoist internal elixir practice or Nei Dan? It was the publication of the book Wu Zhen Pian or Understanding the Reality by Zhang Boduan, a key Taoist figure who lived about a thousand years ago. Zhang Boduan himself was not a religious figure to begin with. He even emphasized in his book that in order to cultivate the Great Tao, one does not have to study Tao's religion since he believed Xiu Dao itself to be a practical system for both mind and body. Ironically, later on, religious Taoism made Zhang Boduan 
one of the Taoist gods. So, Xiu Dao is the practical system that goes beyond Taoist religion. In other words, there is no need to become a Taoist priest if your objective is to practice Xiu Dao. But if your objective is to study and practice religious Taoism, then Xiu Dao practice can be a part of your Taoist religious activities as well. That's why in history, after the creation of religious Taoism, both practical Taoism and religious Taoism have been intertwined in the context of Xiu Dao practice. It is worth noting that in history, other belief systems such as Buddhism and Christianity have also used the term Xiu Dao to describe their religious practice in China. So, the meaning of Xiu Dao has widened with time. I want to specifically point out that I do not promote Xiu Dao based on the Tao's religion. I have studied almost all the major religions in China, including the Tao's religion. I can confidently say that I have studied them to an advanced level. Even today, I often have direct communication and knowledge exchange with different religious groups such as Taoism, Buddhism, and so on. But when it comes to Xiu Dao practice, I will maintain its original nature, a non-religious practical system for self-cultivation through mind, body, energy, spirit, and other elements. In other words, I am not against any religion, especially the Taoist religion, but I will keep Xiu Dao practice free of religion. Hope the Taoist gods help me improve my practice. Now, let's look at the important building blocks of Xiu Dao practice in the next topic. Topic 2 Key Building Blocks of Xiu Dao Practice Most of you may be aware of the building block approach I have used for introducing the three internal martial arts. Today, I will use the same method to elaborate on Xiu Dao practice. It is worth noting that Xiu Dao as the practical system has been evolving over thousands of years. Some practices that developed in the early stages such as Guanxiang or the visualization method have been included as part of later practices instead of remaining standalone practices nowadays. For the sake of simplicity, I will only introduce the most well-developed systems as the key building block. In other words, some specific methods or systems used in history that have been included as part of later systems will not be specifically mentioned here, or else this video would overwhelm most practitioners. I have categorized all of the Xiu Dao practices into a four-level structure system. The first or foundational layer consists of the fundamentals. The second layer consists of the key classics. The third layer consists of the different systems, and the fourth and the final layer is the spiritual layer. Now, let me explain them one by one. The first layer consists of the fundamentals. The most important documents in this layer is the Tao Te Ching and its derivatives, including Zhuangzi and many classics explaining the Tao Te Ching and Zhuangzi's concept. These documents help a practitioner understand the philosophical concepts for further understanding the practical Xiu Dao classics. Also, please keep in mind that 
it is a good idea to bridge these documents with the Xiu Dao classics by interpreting these documents in a Xiu Dao context. Which is the reason I started introducing Tao De Jin based on Xiu Dao practice at the beginning of my recent videos. Also, those teachings are important in terms of helping practitioners understand the linkage between classics and their interpretation according to Xiu Dao. The second layer consists of the key classics, such as Zhou Yi, Can Tong Qi, Wu Zhen Pian, Zhong Lui Chuan Dao Ji, <coughs> Fang Hu Wai Shi, Wu Liu Xian Zong, Xing Ming Gui Zhi, Zhang Shan Feng Quan Ji, Le Yu Tang Yu Lu, and many, many more. There are at least a few hundred very important classic Taoist Xiu Dao documents in history. All of them are worth your time, energy, and attention. If you do not have the time or the resources, then at least some key documents such as Wu Zhen Pian, Zhong Lui Chuan Dao Ji, and Xing Ming Gui Zhi, among others, are an absolute must read. I have to say that reading these documents is so important that Without a systematic knowledge of Tao's practical information, your practice will be greatly limited. I fully understand that reading these documents is very challenging to non-Chinese speakers. However, you have to know that it is not that easy for native Chinese to understand those documents either. Since those books were written using some very specific terms, which are very confusing due to the nature of the practice. So, the best way is to find someone who knows both the language and the practice to explain those terms to you. The third layer consists of the practice aspect. I have divided this layer into Two key categories. The first subcategory is the main Xiu Dao practice, Nei Dan, or internal alchemy, which I call primary practice. The second subcategory is the other practices like Chinese medicine, Qigong, internal martial arts, external elixir, and so on. I put all those practices into this subcategory because they can indirect influence the practice in the first subcategory in different ways. I call this subcategory supplementary practices. So, please treat them as supplementary practices instead of primary practices. It is very important to understand that each school has its own theory and concept, and sometimes the same theory and concept are expressed using different terms, which is one of the main reasons for the confusion that I mentioned previously. It is worth noting that there are many different levels in each style of practice. You have to follow each specific practice process set by each style in order to reach a good result. It takes time and effort, but it's definitely worth it. The third layer is also the richest one in terms of practice since there are so many schools of practice. That makes it important to choose the style that is most suitable to you. The fourth layer is the spiritual aspect of Xiu Dao. Different styles have different ultimate objectives in practice. However, on the spiritual level, they all share a common objective, expressed in different ways. I will make a dedicated video to explain this layer more in the future. Also, I'd like to emphasize that 
even though Xiu Dao is a practical system. Spirituality is important throughout the whole Xiu Dao system, so please do not neglect this layer. It is just a very brief introduction to different layers. Since there are different schools that bring different methods, the third layer is also the richest more than the others. In history, most people have only had the chance to practice one of them. Nowadays, since the information is much more accessible, you may have the chance to work on different style and then choose the one that suits your best. Again, it is very important to know that any practice is based on the first two layers, especially the second layer. If you are missing the first two layers, your practice will go nowhere. So, how should one get started? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. How to begin Xiu Dao practice? This is a big question, but can be answered in a simplified manner. Simply speaking, you have to adopt a step-by-step -step approach. As introduced in the previous section, there are four layers, so you have to work on them step-by-step. -step. It does not mean you have to read all the documents before beginning your practice. You can always start to practice and at the same time study theories and concepts. The key element here is to start. For example, start reading, sitting, observing, and so on. Again, I'd like to emphasize again that you have to study Xiu Dao theory and the concepts, or else your practice will not reach an advanced level. I have never heard of anyone who reached a good level without sufficient knowledge of a Xiu Dao theory. Xiu Dao is a process to refine oneself, including one's mind, body, energy, spirit, and other elements that elevate oneself to another level. Now, let's clarify some common misperceptions in the next topic. Topic 4. <clears throat> Misperceptions Xiu Dao, or cultivation of a Dao, has been practiced in China for thousands of years. Over the past two centuries, people outside of China have studied practicing it too. In recent years, it has become more and more popular. During this period, a lot of misperceptions in both China and overseas have been circulating in the community. I'd like to point out some of them in today's video. Misperception 1. <clears throat> Xiu Dao practice is the way to reach immortality, that one will never die. Well, we first have to define the term immortality. In practical Taoism, immortality does not mean one will never die. Instead, immortality means one achieves the Tao and enjoys a happy life with a healthy body and mind. In religious Taoism, it has another layer of meaning such as one becomes a god. So, generally speaking, immortality means different things depending on the context. If we are talking about practical Taoism, immortality is the result of a practice, not a never-ending physical body. I will talk about the immortality concept in a future video. Misperception number 2. Xiu Dao practice includes many different types of practices. So, as long as I follow the Tao's practice, I'm practicing Xiu Dao. Well, it depends. Following the principle is great, but how to follow the principle is another story. In other words, how to define the term 
following the Tao's principle is the key issue here. Any practice in Taoism reflects and requires certain principles, and specific principles should be reflected by a specific practice. More importantly, Xiu Dao is mainly an energy refinement related practice or internal alchemy practice, if we use another popular term to define it. Energy refinement related practice is the common definition to describe Xiu Dao, although there are other supplementary practices that do exist. If we narrow down the scope of a practice of Xiu Dao, or if we focus on the main practice of Xiu Dao, it is the internal energy refinement. So, following a principle without mentioning a specific practice, technically speaking, is not a serious attitude toward Xiu Dao practice. Misperception 3. If Xiu Dao is mainly about Taoist meditation, then the term Taoist meditation is the perfect term to describe Xiu Dao. Well, unless the term Taoist meditation clearly and precisely defined the overall Taoist practice, I think the term Xiu Dao, which has been used in China for at least a thousand years, is the better term. Xiu Dao practice has the much wider scope of meaning compared to Taoist meditation alone. For example, supplementary practices cannot be included if we use the term Taoist meditation to define it. That's why I started using the term Xiu Dao when I first introduced the Taoist energy practice. Again, Taoist meditation is a very narrow term that just cannot represent the whole Taoist energy related practices. Misperception number 4. Xiu Dao is about achieving Dao, so Taoist religion may help me master the practice better. Well, this is not a very common misperception, but there are definitely some people who think so. As I mentioned previously, I'm not against Tao's religion. On the contrary, religious Taoism can offer great benefits to its believers. However, belief in Tao's religion has no relationship with Xiu Dao practice. As I said, the word Tao can be interpreted in many ways, and religious Taoist interpretation is only one of them. Furthermore, any Xiu Dao practice is a technical system that should be treated as the training method, along with the ability to evaluate progress, which is beyond the scope of religion. So, to claim that in order to practice the Xiu Dao, you have to study Tao's religion is just a Tao's way of being incorrect. This is a serious question, which is why it merits serious debunking. Topic 5. Takeaways First, what is Xiu Dao? Simply speaking, Xiu Dao means cultivate the Dao. It is a process to refine ourselves including one's mind, body, energy, spirit, and other elements that elevate oneself to another level. Second, key building blocks of a Xiu Dao practice. I created a four-layer structure to illustrate the inner relationships of each practice. These four layers are the fundamentals, key classics, key practices, and the Spirituality. 3. How to begin Xiu Dao practice. One has to adopt a step by step approach, which can greatly accelerate progress. Topic 4 Misperception. Misperception number 1 Xiu Dao practice is the way to reach immortality that one will never die. 
misperception number two. Shield dog practice includes many different type of practices. So, as long as I follow the Dao's principle, I'm practicing Xiu Dao. Misperception number three. If Xiu Dao is mainly about Dao's meditation, then the term Dao's meditation is the perfect term to describe Xiu Dao. Misperception number four. Xiu Dao is about achieving Dao, so Dao's religion may help me master the practice better. <clears throat> Remember, all of those are misperceptions. Make sure you are clear in your ideas, or you will lose direction in practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you all once again for all your support over the last three years. See you next time and enjoy your practice.